Welcome back. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to be doing 18 years of sub subservience. It's uh, we're still doing uh, beholding Christ. So we'll go to the scriptures right off the bat with uh, Luke chapter two, verses 51 and 52. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. So when we're beholding Jesus, we're, we'll be looking at an old, old story. And as we behold our Lord and Savior in the developmental stage of his life, Jesus, the Son of God, descended from his lofty throne, descended from his Father, in a state of painful unconsciousness to be born ultimately after nine months into a little baby unconscious of his surroundings. As this little baby, Jesus gradually awakens to his family to learn, to understand, and to learn what the Jewish family was doing. His mother was teaching him of the things that the very child was while still in heaven, was conveyed to this planet, but now had to learn it all over again from his mother. So from the age of 12, Jesus finally appreciated, from then and on, what all the temple worship and sanctuary activities were all about, as he beheld and awoke to his true position as the Lamb of God. From the age of 12, or so, we get filled with awe just to consider that there is such condescension to come to such a level as a little baby from the heavenly court. John 3.16 is a very well-known verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed within him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, God gave who? And how true is it that he gave? You know, he gave him to this planet, to us. Isaiah 6, 9, verses 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou adorest, adhorest, shall be forsaken of both her kings. So here is an interesting ingredient in this gift. It is enlarged before the mind's eye that Jesus, a baby born of a virgin, and as he grew and developed, he would come to a position where he would choose the good and refuse the evil. God gave his only begotten son to come into such a sequence of development that there was a stage where he did not know how to discern between good and evil. He was just a little baby, and he did not know. This is the developmental representation of what Jesus had to go through, like what we have to go through. In Hebrews 5.13, For everyone that useth milk, unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belong to them that are full of age. Those who, by reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. How long does it take for a person who, by reason of use, to have their senses exercised sufficiently to discern good and evil? What is the developmental stage in a child to youth and then to adulthood? What takes place inside of a human? 
It has been carefully assessed in psychological studies in the developmental of a human being that from 0 to 12, there is a physical development so that the age of 12, the physical development starts the adult appreciation, which is adolescence start. Then there is a continuation of development from the mental. From the age of 12 to the age of 29, see here to 21 sorry from the age of 12 to 21 the mental development of the brain completes then from 21 to 30 the spiritual part of the brain is still in development and is not complete till the age of 30 Jesus followed that psychological path exactly when was it that Jesus commenced his spiritual ministry at the age of 30 up to the age of 30, he was still developing. He placed himself in the very experience of development as every other human being. God gave us a helpless baby that was subject to the weakness of humanity into this dominion, an enchanted planet where Satan has governing control. We are worshiping God in spirit and in truth. We are contemplating a dimension of love that is beyond human comprehension. Do you not love your father when you let this actually dawn upon you? As we look on this amazing gift of a human being placed within the Godhead in him into such danger, at such a risk, and what a risk that was involved. Can you actually see the amazing details of the, this risk that Jesus entered into? With Lucifer hot on his heels, not only to prevent him from developing an unblemished sacrifice, but to prevent him from developing a perfect childhood. Can you actually see Satan working hard to bring a not the perfect of this child? Then into manhood, to develop faultless man. 18 years from the point of 12 to of age to 30 developing perfect manhood at the age of 12 he was in the temple and he was awakening to who he really was Script, scripture tells us that he grew in wisdom and spirit and he developed in age during his development from 12 to 30 he was still growing in wisdom he hadn't been perfectly developed yet because his mental development didn't finish until he was 21 and his spiritual at 30. So from 12 to 30 was 18 years of development to develop his spiritual and mental facilities. But where did he develop them? He was born of a woman which was a humiliation and in a manger but more so in that he had 4,000 years of hereditary that he received. In this body of sinful flesh, he was brought up in the slums of Israel. John 1, 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. So what was Nazareth from, from what was Nazareth known for? Nazareth is the slum of Israel. And out of Nazareth, the Savior came. And we behold what it meant to come out of this slum of Israel. Jesus experienced unpleasant circumstances as he developed into manhood. By reason of use, we have our senses exercised to become an adult. He who was God came down to understand the reason of things. The development of spiritual he pursued with great diligence, as he could grow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He is given that whatsoever believeth may be saved and not perish. Here is the matter we are to occupy our mind with. Mark 6, 2. And when the Sabbath day was come, 
He began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him was astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they are offended at him. There is a man who came out. Here is the man who came out of the slums, slums of Nazareth. And he has all this wisdom. He was diligently studying things out. And this is how he shows us the way by reason of use to have our senses exercised. Jesus was a carpenter living an ordinary poor man's life. Those who are not full-time in the ministry but work in, if they are God's people, they're fulfilling their mission as Jesus was. And that is an object lesson. Jesus dwelt long in Nazareth, unhonored and unknown. That this lesson and his example might teach men and women how closely they may walk with God in even the common course of daily life. How humiliating, how rude and homely was the condensation of the majesty of heaven. That he might be made one of us. He drew the sympathy of all hearts by showing himself capable of sympathizing with all. The men of Nazareth in their questioning doubts asked, Is not this the carpenter, the son of Joseph and Mary? Doing a throw work in carp the carpentry shop and in the savings of souls, one is as important as the other. If we are not faithful in the least, then we are not faithful in the other. If we do not pay attention to the small things, we will not be careful on the spiritual things. It looks unimportant, but Jesus was 30 years, and he was there for 30 years. That was the greater part of his life. And all the angels, the angel holds at his command. And yet he did not claim to be anything great or exalted. He did not attach a professor to his name to please himself. He was just a carpenter, working for wages. A servant to those for whom he labored. Showing that heaven may be very near us to us common folk. And to any walk of life. What a glory the Lord places upon the common things of life. The pattern that he showed us. The daily responsibility of life. Jesus lived in a peasant house, a poor house. And faithfully and cheerfully acted his part in bearing the burdens of that household. He had been the commander of heaven. And angels delighted to, to fulfill his word. And yet now here he is, a servant, a willing servant, a loving, obedient son, learning a trade. And with his own hands, he worked in the carpenter shop with his father Joseph, in the simple garbs of a common laborer. He walked the streets of the little town, going to and returning from his home of work. He did not employ his divine power to lessen his burdens or to lighten his toil. It is a it is a burden that mothers have. Mothers have the best, worst burden, the biggest burden, to bring their children into the household duties. He was happy for thirty years. He functioned under the human sinful life, flesh. We know what a drag common chores are. Yet Jesus did it like we have to do it. Mothers struggle with their children to get them to do the most commonest work. Yet Jesus was more than willing to do it. Now young people out there, do you get tired of having to do the normal chores of life? Like sweeping the floor, or normal things that your mom wants you to do. 
And if you don't do it, what happens? Well, if you don't do it, for one thing, you won't develop into a perfect person. So we have to start sooner or later, but it is best to start in our childhood rather than wake up at an older age and try and start afresh. We can become as little babies, but it is a choice. Look at what Jesus did. How do you feel when you have responsibility? Is it a desire? Maybe a joy? A little bit of skirting, skirting it away? Well, this is when we need Jesus the most. When we have to struggle, struggle against obstacles. How many people, when the path gets hard, begin to fold up? Do you know why they fold up when it gets hard? Because they've never developed as Jesus developed. They've never developed as Jesus shows us how to develop. We need to be prepared to be under the discipleship that Jesus was under. It was not because he was divine, he had been such a perfect manhood, but because he applied himself as every man must. The answer to life is here. Discipline is a very dirty word today. Yet Jesus suffered and endured it. Hebrews 5, verses 8 and 9. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. What Jesus demonstrated in being obedient, and he was obedient for 30 years. Well, think about that. The majesty of heaven, the ruler of the angels, was obedient to his sinful mother. He was obedient for 30 years. So if you think you have a hard time, think of the hard time that Jesus had. Jesus had it worse. Satan doesn't want anybody to live on this planet without sin. So he strives against each one of us so that such a thing as a righteous person on this planet cannot live. And what are you going to do? Are you going to be offended to Satan? Or are you going to offend Satan? Are you going to perplex him? Or are you going to be called upon by our Savior who said we should overcome as he overcame? Satan's conflict as he throws it upon us. We will learn obedience by the things by which we suffer. Now, do you have to be locked away in a monastery to learn these lessons? Well, Jesus wasn't. He spent his time alone in nature, but he didn't do it all day. He labored after he received the strength from God. He always went off, fasted, and prayed. And when he did that, he got his strength from his Father. He brought the two together and he learned. From the time that Mary picked him up from the temple, through the 30 years of age, he learned obedience. So, let us pray. Lord, we just ask that you teach us to be obedient, to be your servant. Lord, we just ask that you lead us and guide us and help us on this journey that we have. Lord, we just thank you that we can be here to do what you require us of us. Lord, just help us to be your servant, to be obedient, and to suffer as you suffer. In your loving name, amen. Go ahead and like and um, subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe, go ahead and like, leave a comment, let me know how, what you think. Got some suggestions? 
Let me hear them. But for now, I'll leave you at it and see you next week. Thank you for coming.